Hey, what's going on, guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. Here in this lesson, I want to... Um, this is actually a remake of an older lesson that I've done uh, two years ago, or two and a half years ago. And I wanted to redo this video because, number one, I've gotten better at making videos over the last couple years. And number two, uh, I don't feel that uh, the older version of the video gets as many views as it should. Um, just because I think this is a really, really beneficial way to learn all the notes of the fretboard. And I haven't seen this done anywhere else. Maybe other people have done this before, but I kind of just uh, came up with this myself, or I kind of discovered this method myself through learning the cage system. And um, I call this the immersion method. The reason I call it the immersion method is because um, you can equate it to learning another language that isn't your native language. So you could learn another language in two ways. Number one, you could try and memorize the language. You could download apps that have you do memori memorization exercises, uh, you could memorize the different verbs, different nouns, different sentences, and stuff like that. Or you could just go and visit the country for a year, immerse yourself into the culture. And I feel that if you do the second way, you're probably going to learn the language much faster, and uh, you're going to internalize it much better. So this kind of works the same way. Most of the methods that I see on YouTube and on the Internet for uh, learning the fretboard are memorization techniques. Whereas this method is an immersion method, okay? So I'm going to be teaching you using uh, various different major and minor chord shapes with the cage system in all 12 keys through a 10-minute, uh, you could just spend 10 minutes a day on this. And over the course of maybe one, two, three months, by the end of that time, you're going to have a really good uh, understanding of the fretboard. Okay, and before I get started, I always just like to tell everyone to uh, please take a look at my website if you haven't already. All the links are below um, on my website, which is zombieguitar.com. There's two membership levels. There's a free membership level and a full access membership level. Uh, the free members have access to all of my YouTube videos, but everything's much more structured and organized. It also contains a written lesson that goes along with each video, plus all the charts and all the diagrams that I use in my videos um, are included with the free lessons as well. And the full access membership, um, in addition to all the free stuff, uh, there's 12 full lead guitar improv courses, there's thousands of improv backing track videos, there's a solo analysis page, um, there's all types of extra stuff, okay? So, um, you know, if you're interested in that, take a look at it, all the links are below. Other than that, let's get started with this lesson. All right, so before I get started into going into detail about how this method works, let me just give you a basic overview to see if this is for you or not. So some people may prefer to just do the basic uh, or some of the memorization techniques found on YouTube. I don't have any videos like that because I don't prefer to learn the fretboard in that manner. Um, so let's just see if this is for you. So I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how it works. So the idea is there's 12 keys in music. And... Um, in any of the 12 keys, the most common chords are the 1 chord, the 4 chord, the 5 chord, and the 6 chord. So if you're in the key of, say, C major, C major would be your 1 chord, F major would be your 4 chord, G major would be your 5 chord, and A minor would be your 6 chord. So if you make up a chord progression <clears throat> in any order using those 4 chords for just that 1 key, you could do something like A minor to F major to C major to G major. Something like... Okay, very common chord progression. You can play that same chord progression in various different spots of the fretboard using various different caged shapes, okay? And when I play the different cage shapes, um, I'm just going to be using the high four strings because ultimately what I'm trying to learn is the high, the notes of the higher four strings, the D, G, B, and E strings. So at the end, I'll show you how you can apply the same technique to the lower, low E and A strings as well. But most guitar players learn the lower or learn the notes on the lower strings first but they have trouble memorizing the higher four strings okay so that's why the primary focus is going to be on the higher four strings so you're going to take this chord progression and you're going to move it around and play these various different cage shapes like Okay, I'll show you the shapes in the next part of this lesson, um, but 
this is just a basic overview part. So as you're working through those different shapes, um, you just want to have an awareness of where the root of each of those chords are. So if you're playing in the open position, you're playing an A minor chord. If you know that here's an A, and then here's an A, okay, so that would be the where the root notes are located. If you play an F chord, and you know that here's an F, and here's an F, that's where those notes are located. That's where the root notes of that particular shape is located. All right, if you play a C, and you know your root is here and here, those are your two notes, C, okay? You play a G, you know a G is here, a G is here, and a G is here. Okay, so that's for these full open shapes. It's actually a lot easier when you play these movable cage shapes to know where the root notes are located, and that's the whole idea. So if I'm playing this, okay, so I know for this shape, my root notes are found here and here. If I play this shape, I know my root note is found here. If I play this shape, I know my root note is found here. If I play this shape, I know my root notes are found here and here. Okay, so if I call out these chords to myself, if I go A minor, F major, C major, G major, I know that this is an A, this is an A, this is an F, okay, this is a C, this is a G, and this is a G. So just by knowing these different shapes, as I said, there's only four major and three minor shapes played all up and down the fretboard. Um, if I know these different shapes and I know where the root notes are located within each of these shapes, then I'm second-handedly learning the, um, you know, I'm learning the notes of the fretboard, okay? So that's the whole idea of this immersion technique. You're playing chord progressions, you're playing in different keys, you're learning these different uh, major and minor chord shapes all up and down the fretboard, but as a, um, you know, you're also learning the notes of the fretboard so long as you know where the root notes are located within each of the shapes, all right? And like I said, there's only seven shapes. So if you know where the root notes are located within each of these seven shapes, you just do this exercise for 10 minutes a day, maybe one key per day, maybe two keys per day. I would say just stick to one key per day. You're going to know all the notes of the fretboard in a few months' time. All right? So that's the brief overview. Um, let me get into the detailed um, how to actually do all this stuff. Okay, so now we're going to do the detailed part of the lesson where I show you the uh, seven different shapes that you're going to be using, four major and three minor, and then I'm going to show you uh, where the uh, root notes are located within each of the shapes. And now this may, may be a little confusing for some people if you haven't started to tackle this cage stuff yet, but I can, uh, I can promise you that once you go through this once in just one key, it's going to come very, very quickly and much more easily for you in all of the rest of the keys. Okay, so if you can work through one key once and you can follow along in just one key and then you go and try it in another key or any of the other keys, it's going to be much easier for you. Okay, so I'm just going to start out doing it in the key of C major slash A minor using that same chord progression that I showed you in the previous section of this video. So the chord progression is A minor to F major to C major to G major. So using those four chords, A minor would be your 6, F is your 4, C is your 1, G is your 5. So this is a 6, 4, 1, 5 progression in this particular key. There's only 12 keys. This is one of the 12 keys. So now the different shapes that we're going to be using to play that same progression, there's 4 major and 3 minor. Let me show you what those are. Let me just show you the 3 minor shapes first. So... Uh, the only minor chord in this progression is an A minor chord, so rather than playing it here in the open position, we could also play it up here in what is known as the E minor shape. It's just a basic six string bar chord rooted on the low E string, but we're just going to be playing it on the high four strings. So that's an A minor chord, and your root note is found here on the D string and here on the high E string. Okay, so you know if you're playing an A minor chord in this shape, you know that this note is an A, and this note is an A. Okay, that's one of the three minor chord shapes. The next minor chord shape comes from this arpeggio here. Alright, but we're just playing it on the high three strings, 
on the G, B, and E string. This is known as the D minor shape because it looks just like a D minor chord, but it's slid up to here. You can play this anywhere, and we're playing it here because we're trying to play an A minor chord. In this particular shape, your root note is always going to be found on the B string right here. So you know if you're playing the shape, you know this is an A. This is an A minor chord. This is the note A. Okay, your third minor shape is going to be this shape. Okay, this is just a basic minor bar chord shape rooted on the A string. This is also known as the A minor shape. It's an A minor chord, but it's also the A minor shape. It's movable. You can play any chord, any minor chord in the A minor chord shape. Okay, so we're just doing the high three strings again. And anytime you play that shape, know that your root note is found here on the G string. So if I play this chord, this is my note A. Okay, so you have one minor chord shape with your root note being here and here. You have this minor chord shape with your root note being here. And you have this minor shape with your root note being here. Okay, and then the pattern continues. Once you're up here, you're doing the same thing that you did down here. You're just an octave higher, okay? So let me show you the four major chord shapes now. Let me just do it with, um, <clears throat> uh, I'll pick the G major chord, for example. So you can do a G major chord here. This is a G major bar chord, but we're just going to be sticking to the, um, the high four strings. All right. And anytime you play that type of major chord shape, your root notes are found here on the D string and here on the high E string. Okay, so you know if you play a G major chord, you know this is your note G and this is a G. All right, so the next G major chord shape can be found um, would be up here. All right, so this comes from the C shape. All right, okay, again, I'll link you to my uh, lesson on caged so you can learn a little bit more about that if you want. But just know that you can take the C chord in the open position, play it like this, pretending there's a bar there, and then kind of slide it up to wherever you want until your pinky lands on the root. So here's a G. This is your G major chord in the C shape, but we're just playing the high four strings here. You can do just the high three strings if you want, but I prefer to do the high four strings just because it sounds more melodic when you're doing these types of chord progressions. You can even do the full five chord one, or the five string one if you want. I just like to do these four strings, okay? So when you play this shape, your root note is always found here on the B string. Okay? Your next G major shape would be found here in uh, what is known as the A shape because this is just a basic major bar chord rooted on the A. But I'm just going to be playing the high three strings. So, anytime you play a major chord like that on the high three strings, your root note is always going to be found on the G string here. So I know if I play a G chord in that shape, then my root note is found here. That's the note G. Okay, and then the final, the fourth and final major shape is going to be the G major shape. Uh, this is comes from this shape. But if you were to act like there was a bar, then you could do something like that. This is a really complicated shape to play in a movable manner, which is why I just play, instead of trying to do this and get all crazy like that, just play, you can just bar these four strings and then bar the um, E and B string like this. Okay, you, don't ha you can even just play just the B string or you can bar the E and the B string. Both work the same, just like you can play a G chord down here, or you can play a G chord without your third finger there. Both are a G chord still. So I like to play barring these four, and then barring these two. All right, and then I know when I play a shape like that, that my roots are found here on the G string, and here on the E string. Okay, so, the four different major chord shapes that you're going to be using are this one, this one, this one, and this one. All right, and your root notes are found here 
and here, 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 and here, and here. All right, so you only have seven shapes that you have to remember. Okay, you have the three minor and the four major shapes. As long as you can remember those shapes, you can take a chord progression consisting of the one, four, five, and six chords, and you can transpose that to any of the 12 keys and essentially play the same chord progression using those seven shapes anywhere on the entire fretboard. And you, you practice this, you do this for 10 minutes a day, pick one key per day, and just kind of call out the chords as you're playing them, and then have an awareness of where the root note is within each of the chords, you're going to learn the fretboard very, very quickly, okay, through this whole immersion concept. Okay, something like that. Some parts were a little sloppy. My finger picking is um, my finger picking technique definitely needs work, but you get the idea. So you run through those chord progressions. You do it in the various different spots. As you saw, sometimes I started on one chord, and then found some some of the other chords here. Then I started on one chord and found some of the other chords here. The chords are found all up and down the neck of the guitar. Major chords, minor chords are found all up and down the neck of the guitar in various different shapes. That's the beauty of this whole cage system idea. So that's how I ended up learning this. As I was teaching myself to uh, memorize the cage system, um, I inadvertently uh, learned all the notes of the fretboard. So that's how I came up with this method. Okay, so now we're going to take this and... Uh, we're going to use a circle of fifths and then use the circle of fifths to help you apply this to all 12 keys. And then when you work your way through all 12 keys, ultimately you're going to know the fretboard very well and you're going to know all the notes of the fretboard after a few months. All right. Not only that, but you're also going to know the uh, difference between when to use the flat names and when to use the sharp names. So for example, if, if this note here on the fifth fret of the high E string is the note A, one higher than A would be A sharp. The seventh fret would be the note B, so one less than B would be B flat. So when do you use A sharp? When do you use B flat? Well, by working your way around the circle of fifths, you'll always know um, which is the correct one to use. Things get a little, a little uh, tricky right around the bottom, right around the F sharp key, F sharp slash uh, G flat key. But other than that key, everything else is pretty clearly laid out. For the major keys, for like B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, when you're in those keys, you're going to be going by the flat names for the notes. Um, when you're in the sharp, usually minors, the minor keys go by the sharp names, like F sharp minor, C sharp minor, G sharp minor. When you're in those types of keys, um, that's when you're going to be going by the sharp names. But as you work your way around the circle of fifths, 
doing these various different uh, progressions using the one, four, five, and six chords, you're just going to know which is the correct one to use, which is the whole idea with this whole immer immersing yourself in music and uh, inadvertently learning the notes of the fretboard by doing so. All right, so um, looking at the circle of fifths, we just did the key of C major slash A minor, same key, C major is the major version, A minor is the minor version, so C major, top dead center, that is the one chord, always in the counterclockwise direction would be your four chord, which is F major, uh, the clockwise direction would be the G major chord, which is the five chord, uh, the uh, inner circle in the middle would be your sixth chord, which is A minor. You can then move to the next key, which would be the key of G major slash E minor. G major being the major version, E minor being the minor version. Same thing applies. Dead center in the outer circle is your one chord. Clockwise direction would be your five chord. Counterclockwise direction is your four chord. Uh, inner circle in the middle is your sixth chord. Move over to the next key, which is D major slash B minor. Uh, outer circle middle, one chord. Clockwise direction is your five chord. Counterclockwise direction is your four chord. Middle circle in the uh, in the inner circle in the middle is your sixth chord. So you just do that. You move around your um, circle of fifths, and you just try it in all twelve keys. I would not recommend uh, doing all twelve keys in one day. Me personally, I like to just do one key per day, um, maybe ten to fifteen minutes. Just focus on one key per day. You know, every cycle of 12 days, you've cycled through all 12 keys, then you start over. After about two, three months of this, you would have went through all 12 keys several times, and you have a very good understanding of the fretboard. All right, 10 to 15 minutes a day tops, that's, that's what I would recommend. So you could do the same exact thing, like let's say we're in the key of E minor, and we want to do the same, or E minor slash G major, same key. So instead of doing A minor, F major, C major, G major, you would be doing the same progression, but just in a different key. So we would now be doing E minor to C major to uh, G major to D major. So this would be our progression now. Same chord progression, it's just a different key now, all right? So, you know, I could come and I could start here and I could find my next E minor here. All right, and then I always know that my root note's located here. All right, and then I'm going to a C major chord, which is here. And then a G major. And then a D major. All right, or I can go E minor to C major, uh, to G major, to D major. E minor, C major, uh, G major, D major. All right, so it's the same same shapes. I'm just in a different key now. And after you keep doing this, you're just going to get faster and faster and faster at finding these shapes. And, uh, you know, ultimately you're going to, as long as you know where the root note is located within each of those shapes, you're just going to be really, really quick with it, and you're going to know the fretboard. All right, so... Uh, that's how to apply this to all 12 keys using the circle of fifths. Okay, so the final thing I wanted to say for this lesson is um, I said in the beginning that I, I kind of had the assumption that most guitar players, after they've been playing for a while, know most of the notes on the low E string and the A string. Um, but if you don't know the, string, the notes on the low E and A string, you can still take this whole immersion method, if that's what you want to call it, and apply it to the lower strings. So... Rather than playing these these uh, cage shapes that may be new to you, you could just go with your f more familiar bar chord shapes. So if I wanted to do the A minor, F major, C major, G major progression, I could just go. Or I can go like this. And then when you do that, you know, work your way around the circle of fifths, one key per day, same same concept, but you always know that your root note is found on the lowest string of the bar chord shape that you're using, so you know that this is an A, this is an F, this is a C, this is a G, A, F, 
C, G. All right. Same thing. You're just not you're not confining yourself to just one area. You're just kind of jumping around more. Same thing with the uh, A string. Just do a bar chord shape and jump around A minor, uh, F, C, G, A minor, F, C, G. All right. You can come up here too if you want. But again, these are all rooted on the A string. These are bar chords rooted on the A string. So that'll help you learn your notes on the A string as well. All right. So same concept applied to the lower two strings. Or, yeah, the low E and the A string. All right, so um, it's going to do it for this lesson. I think this ran pretty long. I, I think we're at about a half hour now, so uh, I'm going to cut this lesson out. Any questions, any comments, feel free to ask. Don't forget to, uh, you know, check out my website if that's something you're interested in. Lots of lessons on there, lots of cool stuff, zombieguitar.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.